The Chargers final 53 man roster was just released today and I did a live stream with Bleacher Report giving my initial reaction so if you tune into that thank you hopefully I'll see you again after week one against the Raiders because I'm going back to live stream for them after that game on Monday but Today we're going to be talking about this final 53 man there's going to be a couple of decisions that i agree with a couple that i don't a couple that i'm glad that i was wrong with and let's just go ahead and start out with the quarterbacks okay because we have two of the best quarterbacks in the nfl justin herbert and easton stick so obviously that's a freaking joke easton stick is really not good as a even a backup quarterback and right now i'm looking at other teams i'm looking at the quarterbacks that are being released in free agency right now to see how we can upgrade over this man right here easton stick Justin Herbert is a great quarterback, man. And we listen, we probably have one of the best quarterback rooms just because Justin Herbert is carrying this room on his back. But I don't know if Easton Stick made this team because Justin Herbert, you know, there, there's been people saying that he likes Easton Stick being in the film room and stuff and helping him on the sideline, like I guess holding the clipboard. Uh, maybe he's like clipboard Jesus's, you know, disciple or something like that. But I just don't think Easton Stick has it in him to go out and just be a capable backup even for one drive. So that's why I'm looking at other guys. I think Tyler Huntley would be someone to look at. Um, let me just go and show you guys that the uh, roster right now for the Browns, they have four quarterbacks on their final 53-man roster. Let me just move this over here so you can see better. But Tyler Huntley is one of their quarterbacks. DTR is a guy that was getting some uh, trade talk interest in the Browns. They said, you know what, we're going to keep DTR. I think that was a good decision by them to keep him as the backup quarterback because he's a freaking good quarterback, man. I watched him for like four years at UCLA. Deshaun Watson and then obviously... Jameis Winston. So they have Jameis Winston and Tyler Huntley that are going to be like made available unless they keep three quarterbacks, but either one of those guys is going to be traded. They're not going to have four quarterbacks on their team. I'm looking at Tyler Huntley, bro, because Greg Roman had Tyler Huntley with the Ravens. They have that same kind of offense. It's, it's not going to be the exact same, but it's going to be similar. So you have Tyler Huntley insert him back into this Greg Roman offense. That's going to have some different passing concepts because of the addition of Mark Tressman coming in and being the passing games coordinator. Obviously, Jim Harbaugh is a different head coach from John Harbaugh. So there's going to be differences, but at the end of the day, it's the same offensive coordinator. So getting Tyler Huntley in this system, I think he can go out there and have a better drive, have a better play, play a better game if he is needed than Easton Stick can backing up Justin Herbert. So that's just my thoughts on things. Okay. I don't want, I, I, I don't know if they're going to go out and do that, but he's definitely available. The Browns would not have, you know, kept him on this Ross on their roster and had four quarterbacks on their final 53 man roster if they weren't going to make moves. So some team is going to trade for a quarterback, either Tyler Huntley or James Winston. Maybe even both of those guys are going to get traded, but my first Hey, I'm so glad that I was wrong because J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, Jared Patterson made this final 53 and Kamani Vidal. So I thought that Isaiah Spiller would make this team over Jared Patterson. And, and here's my thought process with that and what I was thinking that they were wanting to do. I thought Isaiah Spiller had more value or they would have seen him as having more value because of his ability to play special teams. Jared Patterson didn't really see him a ton on special teams and Isaiah Spiller has been playing it, but... Jared Patterson is a better running back than Isaiah Spiller. So if you have J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, and Kamani Vidal, three guys that you really like at running back, when are you going to put Jared Patterson in over any of those three guys? They would all have to be either injured or gassed. And how many touches is Jared Patterson really going to get over the course of a season versus how many snaps is a special teams player going to get over the course of a season? So that's what I was thinking that they were thinking but I'm glad that the best running back or the better running back made this roster because Jared Patterson absolutely outperformed Isaiah Spiller in the preseason. So he earned that roster spot and he really, you know, was kind of like an underdog this entire way. So really happy for him. The wide receivers, we kept seven. Thank goodness, because DJ Chark, Darius Davis, Simi Fajoko made the team. QJ made the team. That's a shocker. Not I'm, I'm just kidding. Okay. A lot of people think I hate Quentin Johnston. I don't. I just call it how I see it, whether it's good or bad. Lad McConkey, Josh Palmer, and Brendan Rice. So two big guys here, Simi Fajoko and Brendan Rice. A lot of people were thinking, oh, it's either one or the other. 
But I thought, look, you could keep both. You could have seven wide receivers on this team and, you know, still have a good roster, have a balanced roster, I guess. So that's what they ended up doing. Both Simi Fajoko and Brendan Rice, I thought, did enough to make this team. And now we see it coming to fruition. I really like that. And now let's move on to the tight ends because Will Disley, Hayden Hurst is not going to start on IR. You know, hopefully he's going to stay healthy. Easton Stick should be off this team, but that's for another day. Stone Smart also made this team over Donald Parham and over Zach Hines. So I thought that it was going to be either Stone Smart or Zach Hines, depending on how well um, Zach Hines played in practice, because we didn't see every single practice play, but he did shine. He also was not really playing in the preseason, so I didn't know what was going on there. But Stone Smart, he played pretty well last season, had some good catches, and then he really improved as a blocker this year, I thought, from those preseason games and what we saw in... Um, uh, really just what we saw in the preseason i thought he improved a lot as a blocker and for a guy that is a quarterback transition to tight end and i think he's like 24 25 years old he's got a higher ceiling than donald parham who's older going into his fourth or fifth year and is six foot nine and that's really kind of the only thing that he has to his game he's not a better route runner than stone smart not a better catcher than stone smart he, he's not a better um run he doesn't run after the catch better he's not gonna make a guy miss more often than stone smart is but the one thing that he does have is that he can go up and get a ball on a fade route slot fade in the end zone you know and justin herbert can get it there but if that is the only skill set that he has is that enough to keep him on this team when a guy like stone smart can do everything else better including blocking which i think this coaching staff views as more valuable than that one skill set of having that slot fade in the end zone and you just toss it up to him because he's six foot nine and he can jump over everybody. But that's why I think Donald Parham didn't make this roster. Now let's move on. Offensive line, I got all of this right. Really, really glad that they did not <laughs> keep Alex Leatherwood because at first I had them keeping Alex Leatherwood. And then obviously if you watch my video, I went back and I was like, I, I do not like that at all. And uh, I'm glad that they didn't because I thought they went out and signed him obviously because they like the size and they like the athleticism. I thought that would have been enough for them to say, okay, you know what? He's a project. Let's keep him on this team. We went out and signed him. I do expect him to make the practice squad though, but Alex Leatherwood did not look good in the preseason. And if he is going to be on this offensive line, I don't want Justin Herbert back there. Okay. That's the one scenario where I'm like, let's put in Easton stick instead. So let's move on to the defense, the defensive line. We got six guys. I got this right again. This was a pretty easy one. All of these guys, I expected to make this roster. You can argue like Chris Hinton, um, Jared Clark, but I didn't think either of them really did enough. I thought Scott, Scott Matlock looked pretty good. Otita Bonio, like he really flashed, I thought, in the preseason at times. Justin Aboibi didn't flash much of anything, but he was just drafted and he was obviously going to make this team. So can't wait to say, see what he's got in the regular season because we didn't see much of him in the preseason or in training camp. But that's the defensive line for you right there. And then the outside linebackers. Okay, this is the first position group where I'm starting to think I did, did, did. Joey Bosa, Bud Dupree, Khalil Mack, and Tuli Tui Pelotu. So those it's four really good outside linebackers, four great edge rushers. But Traymond Morris Brash was cut. Chris Rumpf was obviously cut as well. He's not available. So I didn't expect him to make this roster. Not a lot of people did. But Traymond Morris Brash, man, he played so freaking well in the entire preseason and check this out let me zoom in because you probably can barely freaking see this but these are the pff grades and if i just boom right there you can see Tremont morris brash had a 93 elite defensive grade 88.4 coverage grade he had that interception touchdown against the uh, cowboys tony jefferson also had an elite grade but you know that's for later on in this video but Tremont Morris Brash he had a really good preseason I thought 89.6 overall 65.9 you know in on tape he really flashed to me and he also was flashing in practice flashing in training camp I I don't I, I don't know uh I, well I do know they they have four guys that they really like this is their deepest position so they can afford to not keep a guy like Tremont Morris Brash on this roster and they can you know cross their fingers and hope that he clears waivers and they can get him on the practice squad but let's move on to linebacker that's the first one I don't like but Junior Colson, Troy Dye, Dayon Henley and Denzel Perriman now Nick Neiman is not on this roster because he's on IR right now but Troy Dye made this roster because of that 
It's kind of what I expected to happen. I also like Shane Lee a lot. I highlighted him uh, like a week or two ago when I was also doing a film breakdown on Dan Henley. But Shane Lee, probably going to make this practice squad. I don't think he's going to get picked up by another team. I think that's safe to assume he's going to make the practice squad. Traymond Morris Brash, though, I don't know. I really want him to. Just going to have to wait and see. But now we go down to DB. We got 11 defensive backs. And let me move this over again. AJ Finley, Christian Fulton, Alohi Gilman, Cam Hart, DJ, Tony Jefferson made this team. And then Dean Leonard, Asante, Tarheep Still, Jasir Taylor made the team, and JT Woods. So I thought that they would uh, cut this down a little bit so that they could have some more room with like maybe another tight end, maybe a another offensive lineman or something like that. But they're keeping 11 DBs, which shows that they really prioritize depth at that position as well as versatility because JT Woods is now playing cornerback and safety. Asante Samuel Jr. plays a couple different positions outside, inside. Christian Fulton can play outside, inside. Alohi Gillen plays both of those safety spots. Derwin James play, put him anywhere, man. So they have... I mean, just Jesse Mentor even said in his interviews that they don't want just one guy, like say Asante Samuel Jr. They don't just want him playing on the outside. They want to be able to put him outside, inside, maybe even push him back all the way at safety. Bunch of different looks so that they can confuse offenses. Jasir Taylor made this team. Like, I didn't see a lot from him. I didn't think that he was really like uh, the best. I, I would maybe even think matt hankins would be better than jasir taylor i liked what i saw from him in the last game but you know i i'll trust jim harbaugh and what they saw in the practices jasir taylor he was getting some starter reps and things like that but i thought that both tarheep still asante samuel jr and um not cam hart but uh you know i thought a couple guys played better than him and cam hart is a rookie he was obviously going to make this roster he was just drafted but tony jefferson and jt woods made this roster then obviously we have the special teams guys, three special teams guys. Who do you cut if you want to go out and get another player? So let me go and show you. Siaki Ika is a defensive tackle, just a third round pick from a year ago. The Browns cut him to make room for, I guess, four quarterbacks because they have four quarterbacks and they're going to be trading some. But would you go out and get a guy like Siaki Ika? I really liked him when he was coming out of college. And then also Tim Patrick is a wide receiver from the Broncos. Couldn't really stay healthy, but oh, what the heck am I doing here? Okay, couldn't really stay healthy, but he is really good when he is healthy, is on the field. Another wide receiver to look at, or this is a safety, Luis Cine. I, you know, this is, I don't know too much about this one. I, I would probably keep our DBs right now, but the other wide receivers, Jalen Guyton was released by the Raiders. Would you go after him? And who would you cut to go after him? And then there's another wide receiver, man, Tyron Billy Johnson. Remember Tyron Johnson? He was just playing this last game against us and he was cut by the Cowboys. Would you go after him? I don't know, man, but that is the initial final 53-man roster for the Chargers. Only thing I don't like, like I said, is Traymond Morris Brash is not on this team and I would probably cut one of these guys to make room for Traymond Morris Brash if I was them. It would either be Tony Jefferson or JT Woods. Kind of felt like JT Woods was going to make this roster because of what Jesse Minter was saying about him in interviews and stuff like that. But uh, if it were me, I think one of those guys would go and I would sign Traymond Morris Brash. But I hope he makes a practice squad. And that's the final 53-man roster.